to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, no, Jason. <laughs> Welcome in to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. <laughs> Mike Wright, ah! Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Dang, gum it. Excited to be with you. Uh, we are. We decided to hit the go button on the podcast as our league of record waivers were going through the prize of the waiver pool. Uh, seems to have been Dontavian Wicks. He was available in our league. People went pretty hard at him. I would yeah, say they did. Half the league put in, you know, 10 plus fab we had uh someone put in andy you put you in 20 lost it everything andy you put in 25 dollars on fab mike you went 28 and i said no i need this part i have no you need one. Him. I you need gotta him. spend up i'm going to 40 well how much did you did you have left i only had uh about 56 left i think something like that so i put in 40 not hard enough and one guy put in 41 he how good is he feeling right now that was the right bid it was, yeah. Uh, that's that's a big time bummer. I need, you never want to go even either. I mean, you got to go. That's you know what I mean. Yeah, th that is a good point. Yeah, I usually try to go. You know, instead of I mean, here's where you can go even. You can go even at six because it's like five is the is the whole round number that people put in a bid. So you're like, nah. I got big news for you though. Okay. I mean, you did not get Don TV and Wicks. You true. missed out. You did not get Trey Sermon. That is also true. You tried. You you failed. You did not get Trey Tucker. I bid eight dollars. You bid six. Oh, cool, man! But, that's cool. But no, 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 no. Saving I know. grace. I see. Saving it. grace. Well, you didn't get Jordan Whittington either. No, you didn't you, get Whittington. You went four. The winner went five. Oh man! <laughs> but oh, you did get one mercy. player. I got the. Can one... we get a round of applause for I, no, Alexander I, no, Madison? No, you get. That's what you get. This is what you get. There's no applause here. You got him, and I'm playing him. You got your guy. That's how injured my team is. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm a little disappointed I did not get Alexander Madison because <laughs> I needed him too. Oh man! Uh, you Stuff also in these streets. This you is landed a fart fest. You landed two two Atwell, Jason. You All landed right. Juwan Johnson. Okay. All right. Well, you got to do what you got to do. Welcome into the show. See, I was I was gonna wait for waivers, and then Papa Josh was like, "People like to hear these reactions." I just and can't. I didn't know it could be that perfect. Uh, it was perfect for the show, and for you, and for you, and just not for me. And uh, just uh, Al Borland sitting back there in Deucer's Alley. He'd like everyone to know he put no waiver claims in. Cause I that's just how wanted you to know that, but everybody <laughs> else can know too. Because he likes his team that much. I that, do. My team's great. That is fair. Oh, your man. team is very good. You forgot to remember that your team is never good enough. So yeah, that was enjoy one that our, collapse. Yeah, that was one of our 10 things to remember. Uh, I've, what a, I've been there. My team's good enough. I don't got to make the move. His team is pretty good. It looks good well, right and now. And I got a lot of stashes that are hurt that I just can't drop. So, yeah, hanging tight. All right. Well, um, welcome in one and all. We've got Hungry for more NFL news to talk about. Some pretty big news to speculate on and discuss. We've got the Thursday night preview. we got mailbag. So, lots going on. A uh, couple reminders at the top. I don't think I've mentioned it enough. We do have a free in-season app that has rankings in the Start Sit tool and the articles and you can go get that on the App Store or on Android, the Google Play Store. Um, and we're going to be making some big upgrades to that over the coming weeks. We're going to be adding all of the Foot Clan perks and resources, including the ultimate dashboard coming to mobile phones near you. Someday. Someday soon, yes. Uh, well, we, we don't release stuff until we get it right. You know what I mean? That's but, our goal. But it, is, um, but it is coming soon, and the app is free. Uh, you can go get that. You can watch the show over on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. That's where you will get an opportunity for Mike Wright on Sunday live. Although not, this week, not this week, this week it is Jason yeah, Moore on special Sunday guest live. appearance. This Come week. tilts with me. <laughs> Jason's already locked and loaded for this. He yeah. will bring you exclusive <laughs> Alexander Madison and Tutu Atwell related projections. I'm fully prepared to uh, have a bad morning. So come and enjoy it with me. And uh, so, so things are going good. And please, if you want to help the show in a very easy way, we're an independent podcast and um, the algorithms on the on the podcast apps, they they help us out. 
You can click the follow button. That will uh, guarantee you get the newest episodes of the show on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. And you can also leave us a review if you'd like, and that will help us out as well. All right. Um, let's go ahead and jump in. Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. Well, let's go ahead and hand the baton over to Jason Moore here because uh, he's hungry for waivers to be hung- re-ran. To, to run for, again. <laughs> hungry for fab. Yeah, this one was an easy pick for me because when we were watching the games uh, this last week together, we just kept watching Sam Darnold be good uh, for the Minnesota Vikings. And, you know, I, I said I wanted to see it one more time. You had, you know, week one, oh, that's cute. It's against the Giants. Good for him. Happy for him. Uh, then week two against San Francisco, tough matchup. The turnovers were there. We felt like – I felt like he'll pumpkin soon. Um, and then against Houston, it was like, okay, that you're, you're looking legit. He was a top ten quarterback. And, you know, but in Lambeau, he's going to ex- implode, and, and he didn't. He, he was good against Green Bay. So I'm hungry for more Samuel F. Darnold. Um, and no, that is not his middle initial. Oh, it isn't? Oh. No, it's Richard. What? It's Richard, but it why, sounds why cool. Why would you? I mean, it's just cool, man. Why is, uh, why is that cool? Sam Darnold is. <laughs> why? why is that cool? <laughs> Sam Darnold is really important for fantasy right now, not just for himself, but obviously, Justin Jefferson keeps scoring touchdowns, which everybody wants. Jordan Addison, my my guy last year, I love the talent, and it's nice to be able to see him like be able to have success. You've got a running game that is going, and I think all of that depends upon Sam Darnold actually continuing to be good, continuing to, you know, he still has a handful of plays that, uh, you know, either should be picked or are picked, but he's running the offense really, really well, and I, I am formally – in now on Sam Darnold. I've, I've seen enough where I'm going to go ahead and make him pumpkin by saying I'm hungry for more of him. At what point uh, – so uh, over the off season, we talked about him versus J.J. McCarthy, how the opening schedule – like, hey, we're going to see Sam Darnold be out there for a handful of games. The bye week is uh, week six for them. So probably through the first five weeks, which includes the 49ers, Texans, Green Bay, and the Jets, like – he is the sacrificial baby. Like he's gonna get that was he'll the get annihilated. Story he will get annihilated. JJ McCarthy will come in week seven against Detroit. At yeah. what point do we change his nickname? Man, he's who, not the sacrificial no, baby anymore. He's he's, he's out there. Re- he's taking sacrifices. If you want to look for a name, it needs to be something about a great redemption story. It needs to be about a a long suffering coming of age of a quarterback that has traveled from town to town and then later became. A hero, and that's where we're at with Sam Darnold. Like this is okay. this is better quarterback play than th- they were getting from Kirk Cousins right now. If he can get through the Jets, obviously, then the bye week. The whole point of the sacrificial baby was J.J. J. McCarthy was going to come back to a great schedule: Detroit, the Rams, Indy, Jacksonville. That's a month of juicy matchups right now. So you know, we yeah, we got to the search continues for the name. To search continues. It ain't Samuel F. Darnold. I know that. <laughs> all right, Mike, who's your hungry for more? Oh, come on. We all know who it was going to be. Rico Dowdle, baby. We are. Oh, we need more. We need more. We've we've seen tiny glimpses. What an incredible touchdown reception he had on that island game for everyone to watch. The thing is, he still is, if you're in a 12-teamer, like he's borderline playable at this point we just we haven't seen enough work going to him but over the first month that has gone up 16 percent of dallas's total work so we're talking about rush attempts plus targets 19 percent 20 24 percent he seems pretty locked into being the starter as of right now it's just he's still splitting time uh not with zeke not with deuce vaughn what, what, Lupke? Lupke, their, their fullback. They're, yeah, so their fullback. Also Luke, known as their best running back. <laughs> Lupke is, he. I think he's been pretty good as well. I'm not going to take away from him. It's just I'm hungry to see what happens if they actually go just full Rico Dowdle. Is it terrible? It certainly could be. That's. I'm not saying it. it's guaranteed success if it's him, 
but they've been moving that way. And Dallas, their offense is still good. They rank number one in red zone plays per game, third most inside the 10. If if this number keeps going up for Rico Dowdle over the second half, he'll be very good. Yeah, I mean, he, he certainly seems locked in. And there were some quotes coming out uh, recently about you know, maybe allowing him to be more of the we'll guy see, there. We'll see. There was a report from The Athletic. I dove in because I'm, like, I'm locked into Oh, Rico I know news. you're locked in. So I Rico. went in and I looked at it. It was not as good as this little clip or this soundbite sound. I still believe – Pittsburgh, Detroit, San Francisco, oh, the and a bye week. The yeah. next four weeks – The next the next month. You're going to still be hungry. I can't imagine choosing to start him. I mean, don't hear – don't hear me no, wrong. Oh boy, I would start the heck out of him if I had him <laughs> on my league of record team because everyone is injured and on by. I have no. I'm starting right now. Alan Lazard uh, in my flex. So very nice. Well, I'm gonna try my best by this weekend <laughs> to not be. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is it is really tough. Maybe the second half of the year. Maybe the second half of the year he can you know come to life when you've got a run of games against you know the Commanders, the Giants. Cincy, Carolina. There is a stretch there, but that is a long time to wait, and I presume I will pick him up off, off of waivers a month from now. Brian Thomas Jr. is my hungry for more candidate. Uh, this is a player that you know we're seeing come alive from a target share perspective in Jacksonville. Uh, Kyle had dug up some old uh, tape from the offseason when, uh, when we had talked about projections for this wide receiver room. Loved Brian Thomas on film. Thought he would be an immediate contributor in Jacksonville. Trevor Lawrence is not playing great football, and yet Brian Thomas is sitting here on the cusp of superstardom, in my opinion. If they get things going on the offensive side of the football, I still think the buy price of Brian Thomas right now is below the value of Brian Thomas right now. I completely agree. So I, I still think you can go out there and, and acquire Brian Thomas with a flashy name. I think that there are opportunities to do that, um, but this was the wide receiver eight last week. He scored again. Uh, he He's, you know, 86 yards. He had 94 yards two weeks ago, and this is for an 0-4 team with opportunity here against Indy Chicago and New England coming up. Brian Thomas Jr. is averaging some pretty impressive numbers through the first month of his career, and, you know, this is a guy that played alongside Malik Neighbors. You're not going to get to see – as much as you, you know, we've seen this before, right? With the Chase Jefferson, Terrace Marshall, LSU team. This was Malik Neighbors. This was Brian Thomas. But this is a superstar in the SEC that has already shown that he demands targets in this offense. And you, so, usually rookie wide receivers get better as they go along through their rookie season. I mean, once you start out like a Malik Neighbors or whatever, it's that it doesn't you don't give room for like improvement. But Brian Thomas absolutely can be better the second half of the year versus the first half of the year, especially with how the Jacksonville Jaguars offense has looked and, and defense and considering like right now we're, we're a month into the season. And then the, if you look at the top 15 wide receivers, there are three rookies that are already there. You got Marvin Harrison at 10, Brian Thomas at 15 and Malik neighbors at two. So it's, it's a pretty good rookie wide receiver class getting started hot. So hungry for more Brian Thomas. Want to see some more of those big games those over 100 yard games. And I think they're on the way. That was Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. Get game day deals all season long only on Uber Eats, official on-demand food delivery partner of the NFL. Order now. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. This is fun. Well, I, we, look, Devontae Adams has officially requested a trade. He is not Oof. happy. He has not been happy. His coach... We we mentioned it yesterday, but if you, if you didn't listen to that show, and I think what really sparked all of this, well, we don't know the official timing because there was report. I saw a couple reports talking about the the trade demand from Devonte Adams. It may have actually come in before the coach liked the tweet about him being traded Regardless away. Regardless of when, if a player comes in and just, and says that. Just, I'm just saying, of the looking at what Coach Pierce has done. No coach should do that. No, 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 no. I agree. I'm not, I'm not and defending. Just, let me catch people up because I feel like we're missing that. Okay, if you didn't listen to yesterday's show, a post came out that said Devontae Adams might have played his final down with the Raiders. And that post on Instagram was liked by Antonio Pierce, head coach of the Raiders, because this is how we do things now. 
is we negotiate yes. through the media and we negotiate through social media. So that was the talk yesterday. Adams formally requested a trade, or at least we were publicly made aware of that request uh, later on. The week before, Antonio Pierce had come out and said that some players had made business decisions and now they're going to make business decisions. And then suddenly, wouldn't you know it, Devontae Adams' hamstring is not uh -huh. great. It's not great anymore. So he's going to miss the ball game. Yeah. He's probably not playing another down for this team, which when you talk about waivers, we brought up Trey Tucker's name, but Trey Tucker and Jacoby Myers, if they're still out there, those are speculative ads. You 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 have a team that, um, you know, I think those guys could be good, not great, certainly in the landscape that we're talking about with the injuries Jason's team's facing or many teams are facing. You'd love a, a spot start of a Trey Tucker. Yeah, I mean, well, I, bad matchups right now, but I definitely think if if Devonte Adams has played his last, Trey Tucker is talented. He looks great. He's he's impressing. I think everybody. Bad matchups, you might not start him this week, but rest of season, that's definitely someone you should look to on your waiver wires. If he did not get claimed today, um, definitely scoop him up. And I am just person so personally, I'm just Adams. waiting. I'm waiting for head coach Antonio Pierce to delete all photographs of Devontae Adams from his social <laughs> because that's how head coaches act now uh, that it's embarrassing to be honest but Devontae Adams obviously wants to land in a couple of locations that are ideal with former quarterbacks that he's played with the New York Jets yes they have the capacity they are they have the the means to do it play with Aaron Rodgers play uh, go go to the Jets where he has a wide receiver coach he's familiar with or go to New Orleans no and play with Derek Carr why? And undermine Chris I have Olave. so much Chris Olave. <laughs> yeah. Well, you back off my Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson's not a thing, man. He's already backed himself off. They need an alpha in New York. Now, the, the problem is you can want something, but you don't get it all the time, especially in the NFL because, you know, you have to – yeah, I demanded a trade, and the team says, go find, go find a team. Here's what we need back. And the, the, no team comes and dances with that. Right now the talk is second-round compensation – plus something else, plus you have to restructure or deal with Devontae Adams' contract. you got to pay a lot of money to bring him in. It's going to be a, a, a big money hit for the team that acquires him. And and like you're saying, Andy, you know, maybe the Jets want him, but they're not willing to pay the price. Maybe the Saints want him, but they're not willing to pay the price. The Pittsburgh Steelers, we know they were a team that was – they, they were, were willing to pay the price. They were willing to pay the price for Brandon Ayuk. They they offered a lot. Uh, the the 49ers did not accept that trade, but they they clearly are looking for and want to add a wide receiver. So even though Devontae Adams might prefer to go one place or the other, he doesn't have a no trade clause. This is really up to the Raiders. And they, I, I'll say it, like Pittsburgh, they may be a Devontae Adams away from like a deep playoff run. Yeah, they're like that's how good of a team that they are. Like uh, Justin Fields. Russell Wilson, like we've we've dealt with the quarterback dance, but Fields has played well, and somebody like Devontae Adams with George Pickens, I mean that is formidable. Devontae Adams, right now, he is older. He is not a you know this isn't a five year asset that a team is acquiring, but if your team has Super Bowl aspirations, Devontae Adams is right now on the field able to put you over to the top. This is like if I was the Jets, if I was the Steelers, I would do whatever it takes. You know, if it takes a second rounder and and you know an average player on your team. If you're the Jets, make that you, trade. If you're the Jets, it's, it's a must move. Like you have a one year window with Rodgers, really? Yeah. I mean, maybe two, probably one. I think to get a, if it, if they're going to get a two, then the Raiders are going to eat money. Like I don't I don't think you can trade. We we've seen older veterans who even with really high pedigree get moved for compensation, and we we all freak out. We're like, oh, you only got a fourth rounder for that guy? That doesn't make sense. But I, to get the two, I think that they would have to – the Raiders would have to agree to eat cap. Plus, uh, I believe Don, Devontae Adams has no more guaranteed money after this Correct. year. So that could – a whoever's trading for Adams has to look at it as this is one year and then we're going to have – he's, he's going to say, I want guaranteed money. I yeah. think that's why restructuring is the discussion right now is right. because a team would have to give up so much that they wouldn't want it to just be a one-year rental. Especially if he was going to play with Rodgers or going to play with Carr, but how about Hassan Reddick? <laughs> how about the Jets take Hassan Reddick, who has not played for them because they won't give him the money, trade him for Adams, let let Hassan Reddick yeah, and Max Crosby I mean, uh, work that line. 
It is um it is a significant player available in the beginning of the season. Obviously, if you are a manager of Devontae Adams in fantasy, which this is a fantasy show, this is troubling because you don't know what the immediate future is in terms of playing him on a football field. I doubt I I doubted it before the trade demand that we would see him on the field for the Raiders again. I can't imagine he goes out there and puts up an effort and the team wants to put somebody out there that wants to be gone. So like this week, sh- I'd be shocked if he played football. Oh, yeah. I, I I Right now, I think the whole world does not expect him to play another snap as a Raider. Maybe, maybe it will happen, but especially if they're looking to trade him, they don't want to get him injured anyways. I will say that if he goes to the Jets, I think that's – Personally, that's his best fantasy yeah, outlook. It, it would be immediate. Like you're, I'll have no concern starting Devontae Adams week one with uh, with Aaron Rodgers. Oh and my the gosh, Rodgers has been so frustrated right now, and like it seems quite clear that Garrett Wilson is not the alpha we hoped he was. If you watch the frustration that Rodgers has with Wilson these first four weeks, but Garrett Wilson, when you're not the alpha and you get to be the number two. I mean, Garrett Wilson might have like an arrow up in the sense of we, we look at, oh, the, the last month he's had a really tough stretch of cornerbacks. And usually when you're the alpha, it's like, well, cornerbacks just don't always shut you down. But if you got the, the you know, the cornerback two on you while they're focused on Devontae Adams, it's not Garrett, – Garrett Wilson is not untalented. He's just not a true top five alpha wide receiver. And, um, yeah, yeah, that's a tough reality, I think, to come to terms with. Did you guys see the video of Amon Ross St. Brown and Devontae Adams? Yes, yes. Did you guys did you get to see that, Mike? I uh, maybe. So it was like it was like uh one. it's one of those almost BuzzFeed style two guys sitting at a table and, and Devontae Adams said, Tell me the three worst things about like my game. My like, game. Yeah. Like oh, okay. he asked no, Amon Ross St. Brown. So Amon Ross first reaction, he just goes, <laughs> Well old? he goes, Well, you're you're kinda older. <laughs> and then Adams is just like, Oh my gosh. Like so number one was you're older. And then number two, he's like, he's like, yeah, and like he brings up him losing his cool on the sideline, and he's like, you know, because Adams has lost his mind on the sideline, especially last year. So, so he's like, what do you call that? And he's like, uh, weak mentally. And he goes, oh no, 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 I didn't mean that, but just like too too passionate. passionate. <laughs> and then what was the third one? The third one was his speed. Oh yeah, he, he's he, like he, brought he ran a four five times. forty time. It's super entertaining. It's super funny to to watch. Um. We're going to take a quick break and come back with a whole lot more news to talk about. Oh, you know where where it would make so much, uh, just what a massacre, an absolute massacre, if the Ravens somehow traded for him. (laughs) They they take their 15 passing attempts and they give Devontae Adams two of them and you just can't start anybody. I did figure out the situation to start Mark Andrews. Oh, oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah, let's hear. You guys want to know? Yeah, yeah, I got them. It's rare, but in some leagues, if they do let you start a right tackle, that's Ooh. where you can oh, okay. slot him okay, in okay. because okay. points he's, per block. He's one of the most high upside right tackles in the game right now. To be fair, I would also say left tackle. He's great on that. He's he's, he's both good sides. On both both sides. sides. Yeah, okay, really thank is. you, Jason. You could if you have a tackle flex position. Sure, perfect. Is that helpful? He's gonna be okay. He really is. <laughs> Nothing is helpful with Mark Andrews. Nothing. Okay. Only pain. I want the clip of he's going to be okay that I can post every week when the zeros hit. <laughs> well, then let me That's say all the I name. Hear. Mark Andrews is going to be okay. Thank you, Jason. Clip it. <laughs> clip the heck out of it. All right, like Austin. A, like as a person? Yeah, like I think he's going to be He's working. Gonna be emotionally, okay. he's going to be okay. He's working on some stuff. He's, he's getting W's right now. He's pretty right. happy. He's going to be okay. Financially, he's going to be fine. I didn't say your fantasy team is going to be okay with Mark <laughs> Andrews. Oh, okay. Okay. Austin Eckler with the concussion uh, told the Washington radio show or a Washington radio show that he's tracking towards playing. We saw Jeremy McNichols put up a huge week against Arizona with Brian Robinson. So Eckler being back would be good. Shane Steichen noted that Anthony Richardson could still play on Sunday even if he doesn't practice this week Oh because man. the last thing that guy needs is practice. Am I right? We This is worst-case scenario for where we are right now with Anthony Richardson. The matchup against the Jags is so fantastic. If Joe Flacco could be streamed, it would it yeah, will work. Just, 
It will work out. It will work out yeah, for he'll a be, he'll be a top twelve quarterback for a streaming type quarterback and for Michael Pittman and Josh Downs against the Jags with Joe Flacco. They are they're must plays. Yes, yes, please. You I'm put good. Anthony Richardson out there who's hurt, who hasn't practiced all week, who could get knocked out of the game. Then, then what do you do with with? I I'm not even talking about Richardson. What do you do with Pittman and Downs? You said you said him. I don't think that you have to sit them necessarily. I, I believe that they become flex options. Both are okay. I mean, Pittman, this is a really, really good matchup. As you know, in our league of uh, record, I have Anthony Richardson. Uh, I've got Geno Smith on the roster, who's who's been great. He was my stream of the week. Because of this matchup, if Anthony Richardson plays, I'm definitely playing Anthony Richardson. He'll okay. be in my starting lineup. I don't. I don't want to have the potential thirty points to be on my uh, the, on my bench. The last two full games that Richardson played, he scored 9.9 .9 fantasy points and 5.1 fantasy points. So you are risking downside and re-injury with Anthony Richardson, and I feel like the way that we're seeing Darnold and Geno and Goff and these other quarterbacks perform right now and Purdy, like I would really need to not have those options. Yeah. And then you would go for the upside of Richardson running the football, getting into the end zone. Do they even do... I mean, I, I'd be shocked if they had the same design run game plan for Anthony Richardson a week off of no practice in, in the injury. I don't know. They they told him to run immediately after an injury. <laughs> and 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 relying on him as a passer is oh the first three is weeks, very difficult. The first three weeks, Michael Pittman uh, averaged twenty nine yards a game. Nice, but again, week two and week three tough matchups. <laughs> yeah, I, no, no, yeah. I mean, I, no yeah. thanks, no thanks for me. Yeah, that's – stay tuned because Sunday Live, I'm sure you'll get to talk about those guys. Christian Watson, my, a mild high ankle sprain, which is the second, quote, mild high ankle sprain that we've heard of. Actually, the third. This is the uh, – was was Joe Mixon a high ankle? Yeah, Joe ah, Mixon. So was... Mixon, Taylor, Watson. We're now putting the word mild in front of it to try to calm the fears. Stop it. Mixon just missed the last two games. Um, so I'm, and he's day to day this week and I'm, might miss another. I'm happy it's mild. I mean, we, we I've brought this up a handful of times. The data usually says on high ankles you miss zero games or you miss three. So Mixon missing this week would would make sense. But maybe because it's mild, maybe because it's mild, well, look, we go to two. We got a new Chris, designation. This is Christian Watson, and he's not playing this week, which means zero or three. Whoa, whoa, whoa! He's doubtful, Andy. Yeah, I mean, he's unlikely. When the, when the news report is you're unlikely to land on injured reserve, mm -hmm. you're missing time. Which is why Dontavian Wicks is worth at least 42, 43 fab. Yeah. Yeah. I need him so much. Yeah, I did Not too. Enough. I spent I spent 40. Mm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Gotta get your guy, man. I thought I did. You have I, 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 that's why hard. I asked you how much fab you had. All right, Khalil Shakir will not practice on Wednesday dealing with an ankle. They play Houston. Uh the Cowboys will be without Brandon Cooks. We got word this morning that he is dealing with an infection in his right knee following a procedure he had uh, earlier this year against the Giants. So you want a dart throw. Jalen Tolbert is a dart throw there. He's looked good to me. I've watched his film. He's looked all right. He's yeah. looked like he's made some steps as a as a pass catcher, and they can't run. So, right. And, and they're not going to run this week against Pittsburgh. Uh, so Turd I, Ferguson. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Jake Ferguson is a, a must-play so if, if you were in a league with Kelsey, would you trade Kelsey for Ferguson right now, or no. would you keep Kelsey with where you know no, this team is headed? No, with the Rice injury, yeah, I would keep Kelsey. I think he's about to he's about to moonshot. Yeah, I I would agree with that. Um, so Tolbert or Lazard, like hypothetically speaking, <laughs> you're just asking for a buddy. <laughs> just, yeah, like no, you know, people out there might be like scraping the bottom of the barrel. Jets yeah. play who? Uh gosh, who I'll look it up. Okay. Uh Garrett Wilson. Minnesota, right? Yeah, it's not. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not it's not Lazard. <laughs> All right. All right. Um Tyler Huntley. Congratulations, Waddle and A Chan and Tyreek fans. Tyler Huntley is getting another start against the Patriots this week. What what else are they gonna what are they gonna do? You know what they should have done? Now, this is just I'm just throwing this out there. If they had had any idea whatsoever, just that Tua was prone oh, like to one, concussions. One concussion I'm just away saying, from, like, if you yeah. knew your quarterback, like, I, obviously they had no idea with Tua. Right, they couldn't, have, they couldn't have seen a fifth concussion coming. No chance. But if they had, if they had the amazing right. yeah, yeah. foresight 
to know that maybe you, maybe you, I don't know, maybe a little Joe Flacco's on this mm-hmm. roster, or Jameis mm-hmm. Winston's on the roster, or Taylor Heineke's on the roster, or Andy Dalton's on the roster, or like anybody who was on the roster, like, and they'd have them on there for more than two weeks, like Tyler Huntley. This is a a gross mismanagement at the general manager level of this Dolphins team because it undermines everything they want to do to have incompetence at quarterback when you have elite talent at wide receiver. That's the mistake. The mistake. The general manager made the mistake. Yeah, which that's a – hey, shout out to the Colts. Their franchise quarterback – They're literally in it right now. Their franchise quarterback was coming off of a, a season-ending shoulder injury of, of his throwing arm, and they went, you know, let's get a player who we feel confident that if we put him out there, we have a really good chance to win. The Cleveland Browns, their quarterback, was coming off a shoulder injury. Jameis Winston's the backup in Cleveland. And last year, the backup was Joe Flacco because backup quarterbacks play. What is the number we always have? 40, 40 plus. 40 plus quarterbacks get a start every year. No, 40. It's 40 plus Sorry. quarterbacks end up as a, as a top 12 fantasy Thank option yeah. at least one time. And about 60 of them start. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It, and I would, I would agree. It's gross negligence. And I wanted to take a look because – Mike McDaniel, when things are right, and he's got two, and he's got Tyreek, and he's got Waddle. I mean, the offense is great. Tua literally led the league in passing yardage last year, but you've got Ty- you know Pro Bowler Tyler Huntley c- coming here, and and he went to the Pro Bowl for a reason. He was okay once before with a different team. So I'm sitting there thinking like, and like five dudes <clears throat> dropped out. Yeah, well, right, right. There, that was really the. How his, can you his even path. blame him? He's barely been there. Yeah. But. I went back to when he was starting, and he did win three games, lost two as a starter, and his wins were 17 points scored, 16 points scored, and 10 points scored. Uh, so, yeah, yardage, not- 187, 88, 138, 115, 130. Yeah, it ain't. He's never thrown for 200. It's, it's, uh, In the Pro Bowl year, I th- believe. This is, this is where you know I, I know it's scary, and it'll feel stupid when – some big play happens, but I don't mind benching Tyreek Hill right now. I'm still playing Hill because I just I can't do it. I, I get it. I can't it do takes, it. Yeah. I can't put. I mean, what? He, I would love to play Tyreek Hill. Right now. <laughs> let me give you names. Let me give you names. Darnell Mooney on Thursday or Tyreek Hill? Mooney. I mean, Mooney catches three or four balls uh, oh balls a game. Gosh. Tyreek Hill can do that. Yeah, but Tyreek Hill's balls that he catches are going to be at six yards, about six yards yeah. behind the Trey line. Trey Tucker this week. No, I'd still go. Hill. I or would Tyreek. Go, Hill. I would go Hill because of the bad matchup. I mean that that's just that's really tough. So, I mean, but I, I mean, I think what about are... Devon Achan? What are you doing with Devon Achan with the news of Tyler Huntley? Achan, ten carries, fifteen yards, no passing work, which is supposed to be the equalizer for the inefficiency on the ground. Do you trust Mike McDaniel in what he said, which is we got to just we're going to rethink everything. Yeah, I mean, I, th- that has to be what they're At doing. At least they, you're they, saying that. They can't go out there and, you know, score, barely score 12 points and not rethink things. Obviously, Andy, you brought up, he, he said afterwards, like, that wasn't how practice went. They thought they were okay. Um, you've got a shot that McDaniel can figure some stuff out here going into New England. I I think New England is a top half defense, but they're not as good as Tennessee was last last week. I can tell you, I have uh, HN in our listener league. It's a super flex, and I had I had stashed Trey Sermon. I just I had picked him up because I had an empty spot, so I didn't even have to fight for him on the waiver wire. Trey Sermon is in my lineup oh, yeah. right now over Devon HN. Here we are. Welcome yeah. to fantasy football. This is why you don't win your league at the draft. We say that. You set the foundation. This is when you win your league. The decisions you're making yeah, between now and decisions. through the bye weeks. I mean, it, it's not just injuries. It's like we're entering bye week territory. It starts at decisions from this point on. So a um, couple more updates. I mean, we've got a lot of news to talk about. I'm glad it fell on a Wednesday. Brian Dable said Malik Neighbors is in the early stages of the concussion protocol. Too soon to forecast his status. That's, that's not great. On a he won't Wednesday. be on the field, and neither will Devin Singletary. Wait, what? Ooh, that's news. Wait, what? Boo, doo, doo, boo, doo, boo. Devin Singletary will be. He's missing practice today, which you know, one player I think I've been impressed with at least in a Bucky Irving style. Yes, it's Tyrone Tracy. Yeah who is being written down by my cohorts here because they want to make some moves. You better spend your, that fab, bro. So Tyron Tracy, you better. Let spend. me know what you're spending. I'll spend $1 less, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Um, so something to pay attention to for New York. You know, Singletary, I don't have any other news. I don't know if the Deucers can get more context to just not practicing for us. Feel free to break in, Al, if it you does, get anything. It does look like when I go to groinindex.com ah! that um, that that's where – That's where we track groin injuries. That's where we track yeah. groin injuries. Devin Singletary has a groin injury. So. Is that what hey. it's confirming? Now, what is the rea What is his reaction to it on uh, there? I believe it's ah! – <laughs> Okay. If – I mean, that would explain a lot of things about last week against the Cowboys. He was – very banged up in that game. He he left kind of injured. He also, I mean, they they haven't played since last Thursday. So him not being out there, yeah, that's a problem, right? Yeah, yes. it is. That's concerning. All right, Gerard Mayo on whether he would consider starting Antonio Gibson over Ramondre Stevenson, who has fumbled four times in four games. Not not Antonio. Just to be clear, right. that we're talking <laughs> about Ramondre. Yes, Antonio would be in the future tense. Uh, he said that's definitely under consideration. We can't preach ball security is job security and still have him out there the majority of the time. Last week, we discovered on the show or talked about fumble, fumble, fumble. Like, Ramondre had three games, three fumbles. He was like channeling his inner Chris Carson. And then all of a sudden, game four comes, and it's not in the late part of the game. It's no. right in the beginning. Right off the bat, he's like, here you go, other team. So four games, four fumbles for Ramondre, and – it sounds like Gerard Mayo is basically saying, look, this is what we teach. We say ball security is job security, so we got to live by what we say. Now, whether that's a you know, a disciplinary, cursory first drive for you know, for Gibson or not, you know, we saw Richard uh we saw Ramondre come back out on the field last week. He was great for the first two weeks of the of the year efficiency wise. He was not great the past two. He did catch four passes. And Gibson it, has been incredibly efficient as well. So I think that the, I'm not, I think Ramondre is, I, I think this is safe. This is just a, this is a, a warning shot of like Ramondre, you have four fumbles on the season and like for uh, some context of that, Antonio Gibson has also had a fumbling problem, but it, it was like this huge deal. His, his sophomore year, he's out of control with the fumbles. He had six. In the full season. In the full season. Ramondre's already at four. Ramondre's pacing for 17. <laughs> I haven't looked it up, but my math says he's on the on the way for he, 17 fumbles. And here's the real headline to me. Like, like um, Antonio Gibson's worth having on a, on a roster because running backs are hard to come by and you never know. But the other thing is whether Ramondre's in the doghouse or how long he spins there or whatever, he still has to play football and not fumble. That's the risk. The ri and I remember this with Chris Carson. It was like, oh, cool. Pete Carroll has a lot of trust in you. You're back out there. But you know what I did? I watched every game with the fear in my belly that the next play and the next play and the next play, there'd be a fumble and you're gone. Mm -hmm. So that is now a risk in the equation. Now, I do have an update on the uh, Devontae Adams news. Diana Rossini, um, good follow on Twitter, confirming that the Steelers are interested in trading for Devontae Adams. That one is the most like smoke fire of all the situations because the Steelers already were here. They were willing to pay $30 yeah. million dollars a year to Brandon Ayuk. So they said with their pocketbooks, we need another guy and we need a big name. So the prescription here for fantasy players, guys, we just talked about George Pickens a couple weeks ago as a trade for candidate. You got to make them. You got to make your move now, right? Like, if I have George Pickens, I'm trying to move him. Really? Yes, because I because when you trade a player, you're trying to just get equal value back and lose a risk factor. And to me, if I get what I should get back from George Pickens and that risk factor is gone from my team, like if he – they don't throw the ball enough. Like Pickens oh, as agree. a wide receiver two in Pittsburgh would be a big problem to me. I'm just saying of the, the idea of getting back what you should get back from Pickens, like – Pickens has been very good this year. He's been really good on the NFL field. Fantasy wise, it was this past week he was seven for one thirteen. But before that, wide receiver twenty six, sixty three, forty five. Like if I hit the trade market, or if you hit the trade market coming to me with Pickens, Here's, I'd be like, I'm not giving you very much. Yeah, yeah but right you could go get Terry McLaurin. You can go get Terry McLaurin for George Pickens. I don't think you can. Yeah, Maybe that, before last week, that would be tough. I, I mean, before last week, I was saying trade for George Pickens. Um, I hope you did because it wouldn't have cost you much and he had a good game. 
I, I also think he is incredible the rest of season if Devontae Adams doesn't come. So that's the fear is if you're not getting a lot for Pickens and then Devontae Adams goes to the Jets, well, now you're like – It gives me – it just makes me scared. I, well, I, I get, get it. Yeah. I get it. There, There is definitely risk there. We, we, you see teams that go after players – um, you know, that when they're rumored and the, you know, whether it's uh, rumored in the draft, rumored in free agency, and then they trade for someone. I mean, that was, that was what we saw with the Texans, uh, a bunch of rumors about wide receivers, and then they go trade for Stefan Diggs. Um, so yeah, I mean, that obviously this is a, a team in Pittsburgh that wants to add someone. It, I, you just can't do it after. So it, it, you have to make your own yeah, call yeah, yeah. whether the upside of Pickens rest of season with potential outcomes is worth going and try to swap him for somebody else that look not everybody's going to be following this news in a you know this could be three weeks away this could I, be two or three weeks away i would Will's, go I, the, the, the cursory move i would make right now is even if i'm good at quarterback justin fields on sleeper is available in over half of leagues like yeah I, and that would be such an upgrade it would be a mobile they're, running they're, quarterback. they're still not going to just air it out all the time but last week was a negative game script and Justin Fields had over 300 passing yards. Like, not it, not every week is going to go as good as when they played Atlanta, Denver, and the Chargers. Yep. Like, like game scripts will be more competitive for the Steelers moving forward. I, I think Justin Fields should be rostered regardless. And now, if you have a slight hope of getting a a, a superstar on this team, if you look that's at that's wild. Like what we think of the Pittsburgh defense, and then you saw what happened last week in Indianapolis, it starts to make you say. Oh, well, they got Kirk Cousins first game off an Achilles in week uh -huh. one. They got Bo Nix in week two, yep. and they got an injured Justin Herbert in week three. And, and, then, here, they, and, and then they got Joe and Flacco. And then they got Joe Flacco, <laughs> and they gave up some points. They lost the ball game. So, yeah, maybe we don't. And you guys, I know, talked about it on the uh, uh, special ready-to-roll segment on Monday, looking at the defenses. But this is why you don't react to just one week or two weeks. Um Mm -hmm. You know, they're great against the run right now, statistically, but the passing games, you might have more of these shootouts. Yeah, Fields' upside is enormous when you have a mobile rushing quarterback with two good wide receivers. The only fear I have there is we'll have to see how the work day goes for Russell Wilson, who is, sure, um, you know, going to get back to work now. <sighs> oh, my gosh. Russell Wilson. What if we, he's nobody, the pickup? Nobody needs... <laughs> Nobody really needs Russell Wilson in their life. Yeah, just let he's he's cashing checks from the Broncos, man. Let let Fields do it. Just retire. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We got some Thursday night football. Thursday night breakdown. Well, this should be a fun one. Tampa Bay, 3-1, and one, taking on the Atlanta Falcons, 2-2 two and two, in Atlanta, where DraftKings has their line Atlanta minus 1.5. So, tight ball game over under 43.5. Hoping for some good Thursday night football football on the field. Last week, we didn't get that. Oh, my gosh. Last week, we got Don't bring that up. a really difficult-to-watch football game. But this is a divisional game here. We where are, we're sending... The Borgogan there. We're getting to have boots on the ground. Kyle will be at the game. And uh, based on recent reports this morning, he should be able to watch B. John Robinson play football because it looks like he said he is fine. Yeah, he says he's got little nicks and bruises, but he's ready to go for tomorrow. So that's that's great news when, when you see him pop up on the limited participant in practice. You're just, you worry a little bit. So winner of the game through five weeks will take control of the NFC South division. Both the road teams won in this matchup last year. One was – this is not the one I'm rooting for for Thursday night. It was 16-13. But the one in Atlanta last year was 29-25, and that, all I, right. that I'm all about. Yeah, it's temperature controlled. You know, you got a dome uh, in Atlanta, so I, I presume it will be another 29-25 to 25 game. That's how math works. Uh, I will say <laughs> the way that Laser Mayfield has been playing uh – -huh. I yeah. think okay. Uh, we need a laser sound effect immediately. Oh, oh yeah. I want pew, pew, pew. That, yeah, we we Give can work on that. Give me something for Laser Mayfield because that name just rolls off the tongue. I heard you guys yeah, it's break it out on Monday. Was that a Monday pun day? It was. It was. Whoever so, that was that was courtesy of the Foot Clan. But Laser Mayfield. Is, I think that could be ooh, our beautiful. first ever nickname that came from Monday pun day. 
I don't know if we've ever had Monday Punday be the genesis. I don't know. That's a Kyle question. Mm. That is no, a Kyle yeah. question. Uh, but the the Atlanta Falcons, you adjust for schedule this season. They're they're giving up roughly twenty nine and a half points to wide receivers uh, for fantasy. So I think this is a good matchup for uh, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. Not that you wouldn't have been playing them already with how they've been playing, but that that also says that I think Baker is in consideration. I'd I'd much rather start Baker than Kirk in this same game. So. All right, so Baker, Kirk. Uh, I haven't heard very many folks consider Kirk Cousins right now in the streaming conversation in general from week to week. Is that – Yeah, I, I think – You know, that, we're just waiting for a game where it all comes together? Yeah, we're waiting to see him um, really air it out, utilize his weapons, uh, have the the type of – you know, he hasn't thrown for 300 yards yet. His yardage has been not Kirk Cousins-ish, and they're still winning some of these games. I mean – He's thrown for 155, 241, 230, and 238 yards. That's just not getting it done for a mobile quarterback. And his, for a non-mobile quarterback. Yes. And his his only top 10 performance of the year was week two against Philadelphia, which took the the miracle comeback at the very end the of the The drive game. he shouldn't have had. Right. Those numbers are why I'm still Tyreek Hill over Darnell Mooney is because Mooney is – going to be a happy if he scores player for you. He he looks great. He is doing everything he needs to do. He's leading them in yardage. But at the same time, he's got one top 36 finish. And like if I'm if I've got a chance of being outside the top 36, I'd rather have it with Tyreek Hill. Um but I I mean, I have Mooney on my team. He's going to be a flex during a bye week situation for me. He's going to play for me. But that's the reason why I'm more scared of that situation. Yeah, I, I certainly d wouldn't tell everyone you must bench Tyree Kill for Darnell Mooney in any way, shape, or form. But you have games with 88 yards and 66 yards. You've got games with a touchdown for Mooney. So he is in flex consideration, and you just wonder what the what can be done right now with, with Tyler Huntley at quarterback. I, no, I, I wouldn't want to have to watch that game. Drake London? Drake London, uh, what is the – you know, we, we talked about Garrett Wilson. We talked about Chris Olave. Where are we with Drake London? Last week, he was 6 for 64 on 12 targets. It was his target high of the year, which is great. Previous two weeks, he got into the end zone, finished inside the top 20. Like, Drake London feels kind of safe yeah, right now. Yeah, I, I think he is. The targets uh, are trending up, which the, is – that's that's fantastic. Yeah, that's, the, what, that's what you want to chase. When the production's not there, is, uh, is Drake getting the opportunities that he deserves as, as the number one wide receiver for this team? And it looks like we are getting there. You would expect, um, as the season goes along, the rapport between Cousins. As Cousins yes. gets healthier and the rapport strengthens, he becomes the clear number one alpha. I mean, the targets, What you said they're going up three targets, seven targets, nine targets, 12 targets. If these trends continue. Can I, can I get the camera on me real quick? Can I? Listen, I want one more. i got to talk about the last guy here on Atlanta in the receiving game. I'm going to say it right. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Oh, this is serious. Get out of the <laughs> Kyle Pitts business. I told you I got out in week one. Get out. Get out. This guy is not good. All right. You can take it off. Uh, to be fair to you, he's really been bad. Um, 80th by the ESPN Open score out of, of 80. Yeah, that's incredibly bad. That's worst. And, and to be honest. Go watch the film. The film is with so a, Bring much, a bag with you. The film is so much worse than saying that he is 80th out of 80. There was a a, a really important play, just a little slant uh, off the line of scrimmage. He's in the slot to the left. I mean, this guy is giving a F for effort out there. He, putting, putting the F in effort. I mean, he was just... Kyle F. Pitts, <laughs> yeah, he as was, you would say. He was jogging, barely turns around, gets his hands kind of out there. I could have I could have defended that pass, and that defender did very easily. He is... He's on pace for 34 catches for 400 yards. That is not a rosterable player. Somebody sent me a message. They said, would you pick up Tyler Kraft and play him over... J uh, Tucker over Kraft? Yeah, Tucker Kraft to play him over Kyle Pitts. I said, yes. Yeah, of course. You don't want to be in the Kyle Pitts business. Drop him. You'll go bankrupt. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I just – he's still a name. He's still a tantalizing name, but he's not playing good football. And I feel bad because I don't – this is not the player that came out of college. It's not the player that put up 1,000 yards. No. No, no, no. You, you need to separate in order to – not just a broken play here or there. Any tight end can get a broken play here or there. Elijah Higgins for the Cardinals – Caught a 30-something-yard touchdown from 
uh, Kyler Murray. He's not the future. Yeah, and then uh, as far as the running game goes, um, you know, Vita Vea should be back. The 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 Buccaneers are very very different with and without Vita Vea. So you've got uh, not enough games where we, when when you had him gone and they gashed him on the ground, it looks like you can run on the Bucks pretty easily. I don't think that's true, which obviously is not great news for Bijan, but he gets it done enough in the passing game. Yeah. What do you, what do you guys think on the Bucky Irving Rashad White split? Well, look, I, I think Rashad White's involvement in the passing game is is important. And I think Bucky Irving played really well last week. I think both of them played well last week. It was a good game for Laser Mayfield. Oh, oh okay. 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 The volume was a little high. No, that, no, was, that was perfect. That's perfect. Oh, yeah. No, that's good Tell stuff. Tell me you don't want to start Baker if you get to hear that. Al, good work over there. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Amazing. That's, that's a short notice laser order that wow. we that we put in and you delivered. We got you back here. Now did you adjust the volume at all? No, keep no. Keep it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, turn it up. See that unlike the the old um uh hype train, nobody can be worried while they're driving that somebody's really shooting that, lasers that a, at uh, that an Imperial Star Destroyer is, yeah. is, is on, is on your tail. quickly looking at my rear view mirror. You know what? The volume's fine. <laughs> yeah. The volume's fine because there's no real danger. That's a, that's a hype that, sound is effect. Is that the Emperor? <laughs> yes. Oh, man. Um, That's good. That's good stuff. All right. What What's your take on those two guys? Because I, I feel like, you know, week to week we're, we're scared about the kind of committee backfield. I think if, like... If you're willing to play Rashad White, you should be willing to play Bucky Irving. That's kind of how I feel about. It. They're they're both unfortunately the high the true high value touches are are gonna be split where like White's getting the receiving work. Um, did they? Let's. I'm trying to check the the uh, the red zone usage here. So, uh, Rashad White had no carries inside the five. Did Bucky have any last week? He had three. Oh man, it's all it's, it's, well, and, this and is all cattywampus over here. White ran for four point <laughs> nine yards per carry, which was nice to see. Only two catches. I think your statement is right. I'm going to go with that. If you're willing to pay play White, you're willing to play Irving, and I think that's a good place to go. You're definitely willing to play Evans, and you're definitely willing to play Godwin. Evans had some maintenance days dealing with a you know knee, calf, and being old. Yeah, and Jalen McMillan has been ruled out. Yeah, I, you want your DFS dart throw, man. I'm telling you. What, Palm? I'm, no, no, not no, Palmer. No, no, because no. he's out with concussion. Blast from the past, Sterling Shepard. <laughs> Wasn't he Thursday just Thursday night football. No, he, I think he put up numbers last week. What? Yeah, he was uh, activated from the practice squad again. And he, he, Okay, that's what it was. Three okay, yeah, for yeah. 51 last week for Sterling Shepard, and Trey Palmer Good and Jalen McMillan man. are going to miss. And Sterling Shepard is going to catch a weird touchdown, and you're going to go, "What? He plays still?" And and the answer is yes, he does. I mean, he's a good NFL wide receiver. And you want to know why he's going to catch the ball? Oh, because the lasers are firing off, snagging lasers. Um, I, like I hate to bring it up because he K. Dotton is the cardio king, but two weeks ago, eight targets, seven for forty-seven. This past week, nine targets, six for fifty-two. This is a. I'm not playing him. You're saying if it's not Sterling Shepard, it might just be K. Dot. I'm. I'm not playing him from this, but I'm going to keep an eye on it. If we have another like, if seven or more targets for K. Dot, I'm this fine game, playing him in this game over. You are over okay. Kyle Pitts, and I'm fine playing him over Jawan Johnson. Over Kyle Pitts, sure. I wouldn't play him over Jawan Johnson. I, the Falcons have been pretty good against tight ends so far, so I'm. I, I don't know that that's some game i want to play i see 24th i well, see you giving up last nine. Year. if you're adjusting for oh, schedule no that's this year no if you're adjusting for schedule right now um you you look at pittsburgh week one was about four points under their average philly week two was about five points under their average uh that was when they shut down gotcha got her a little maybe bit maybe i'm looking at the one wrong catch numbers. too few yeah one catch too few to shut him down oh yes as dallas goddard in that garbage catch at the end all right we'll take a break we'll come back with some mailbag All right, Mike, warm up those pipes. Here we go. Mailbag. Maple bag. Ooh, yeah. All right, we are here to help. We want to get you going in week five. And uh, maybe a little PSA at the top here. It ain't over. 
Okay, if you're if you're struggling, if you're one and three, been there. Lots of Foot Clan listeners have been there. They battle back. The injuries, the bye weeks, the opportunity to get things going. You know, sometimes you are the bad luck Chuck. You're the one that, you know, the opponent has scored the most in the league and you're the second most and you get the L and that hurts. And and sometimes you are the team out there that just has a bunch of bad injuries and it's, it's not your fault, but it happens. And you're going to have a bad month long stretch of football. But if you don't give up, you can still be 100% fine. Like, like I'm talking about, you know, am I starting Alan Lazard or, or, or Tolbert here because I've got Puka Nakua and Isaiah Pacheco and Montgomery's on by and, got you know, I'm just scratching and clawing. I'm probably going to lose this week. Like, I know that. But that does not mean that you give up. And I, as time goes on and other teams deal with their problems and my players come back, you get enough wins to – all you got to do is squeak in the playoffs. And if you could squeak in the playoffs, you could win a championship. And the nice thing is, is this is not – just some blind hopium. This is 10 years of, of thousands and thousands of players that tell us their stories every year about battling back and winning titles in far worse conditions. They, I mean, we've had them worse than 0-4, I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, if you have a question for the show, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. That's also where you can join the Foot Clan, support the podcast, get extra episodes, get the ultimate dashboard. You can also dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. We're going to kick it off with some voicemails. Hey, Colby calling in from Wisconsin. Wondering if you guys would trade Zach Moss for Brian Thomas Jr. My current running backs are Joe Mixon, Brian Robinson, Bucky Irving, and Zach Moss. And I'm currently trying to replace Rasheed Rice. Thanks for the advice. Love the show. Yes. so the, I would do it. The question is, would you trade Zach Moss for Brian Thomas? The running back situation for this team is it's good. You have four, four playable running backs right now. It would drop down to three. It would but drop you, down to two if obviously if Mixon can't play. Right. This uh, week. But to get Brian Thomas, yeah, I would I would do that. And we do we have a, a follow up there of would you trade Ramondre for Brian Thomas? And I, I, I would, would trade, do that too. I would trade either one of those guys for uh Brian Thomas. Uh, Andy, he's your hungry for more. A little spoiler. He's my start of the week this week. He's really good and he's gonna be better and better as the season goes along. All right, let's go to another voicemail. Howdy ballers. This is Dan from Maryland. I drafted both Kyler and Jaden Daniels. Would you trade Jaden for a productive receiver or running back since I still have Kyler? Or is Jaden the greatest rookie of all time? <laughs> Thanks. I love this question. It's super important. Um, we just got, got to watch them go head-to-head, -head and Jaden Daniels won the day. Jaden Daniels has been incredible. Um, I, don't want, I don't want to be a, uh, you know, a victim of the moment, mm -hmm. right, and just – live in the isolation of one week. But my answer to this is I would trade whoever you can get the most for. I that, that was, That's what I would do. Like if, if somebody else wants to be a victim of the moment and wants to offer you something incredible, I think you're fine moving forward with Kyler Murray. If somebody wants to give you more for Kyler Murray because he's got a more established name and you know, or you want to wait for Kyler to have a big game and do it, to me, I would just – I would trade one of them. So I would not hold them both, and I would try to get the most – value whatever that means if that is the case then you are trading Jaden Daniels because I firmly believe right now the victims of the moment out there this is the time where people are going to try to call their shot on Jaden Daniels and say he like he's the he's the quarterback one right now and so if someone else believes they, they're watching these games he's been incredible and and someone wants to go get the number one quarterback they're gonna they're gonna have to pay up for Jaden Daniels I don't think that someone right now is trying to if they're trying to trade for Kyler, they're trying to trade for Kyler on Low, the cheap. I agree. And so I I believe both quarterbacks are going to be very good for fantasy rest of season. Um, I would rank them rest of season, Jaden, ahead of Kyler. But if the gap in what you can acquire in a trade means that Jaden Daniels is worth a lot more, then, then yeah, I would be willing to trade him instead. Kyler, uh, Kyler is one of my guys this week. He has been This awesome, week or this or, year? Uh, this year, sorry. He's been awesome in one game, and in three games he has been eh. One touchdown in eh. three games and not – Jaden runs more. Yes, that, and that, I would be I would be keeping Jaden Daniels. Kyler Murray, the next two weeks, on the road against San Francisco, then on the road against the Green Bay Packers, then he plays the Chargers. Miami, I don't know if that's whatever, but then Chicago, 
and then the Jets. That's all the games up until the Are bye week. Are you getting out of the Kyler business? I'm not getting out, if, but I'm saying if somehow I, the world is I have Kyler and I have Jaden Daniels, then I would I would be keeping Jaden. I'd be I'd, I'd be going for the hopes and the dreams of what he is doing. Like when they get to the goal line, it's not just Brian Robinson. Like their read option is going to Jaden Daniels tons, and he's connecting with Terry McLaurin in the last couple of weeks. I I am curious though the long term view on Kyler because we had a conversation a week and a half ago about how many streaming quarterbacks there are and how few locked and loaded starters there are. Jalen Hurts was one of those locked and loaded starters. He struggled. He doesn't have weapons right now. Kyler struggled last week after a great opening drive. Is he still in the category of you think if you have Kyler on your team, do you feel like you're fine? Or do you feel like you're actually looking at that schedule, looking at the way he played, and trying to decide if you need to make a move? Because, you know, last year, my championship team, I had to trade halfway during the year to go get Dak because of a nice schedule. Right. And I could have sat on the two a start to the year. Luckily I didn't. It's tempting when a player's playing well to just sit there. Kyler's not playing that well. He 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 certainly did not play well last week, but I view him st still, if I had Kyler, he was my main and only quarterback, I would still be viewing him as I've got a quarterback and I'm fine. Yes, this is a I player who, you know, last year was 18.3 fantasy points per game. The year prior, 18.2, 21.5, 23.7. He's had a career of getting it done for fantasy. This last week was putrid, bad, against a bad defense, uh, inexcusable. The fact that he didn't run at all, I think he had three rushing yards, was so weird because he was attempt. he was running the ball the first three weeks. And and also, he was missing Trey McBride, who is yes, you know, his, good point. his 1A, 1B. And so I, I'm not, I'm not going to – that, I think, would be too much victim of the moment overreacting from one – horrific game against what's, the Commanders. What's crazy is his touchdown rate this year is a career high and kind of an outlier on the high side. Yeah, Marv, Marvin Harrison is helping him do that. Like Looking at Jaden Daniels, last week when he he was the QB7, he ran the ball eight times. That was the the, the fewest of the season for Jaden Daniels. Eight was his fewest? Eight is his fewest. Yeah, I mean... So that I'm saying that's why if I have the two, whew, I'm not I'm not even... I'm not cashing in. I'm gonna keep Jaden, and I'm gonna see if I can use Kyler to repair a like a a flex position. So disappointing that I went Tink Bigsby over him. Remember that <laughs> <laughs> for your my guy. Um. All right. Uh. Last question here. YouTube question. How do I tell a league mate they offer horrible trades and it's annoying? Oh, I mean, you just that you just said it. You just you tell them straight up. You offer horrible trades and it's annoying. <laughs> That's what I would do. Yeah, I mean, what's the frequency of these trades? Oh, it's got to be frequent. When 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 you've got one of the, we all know this person. We all know this person. It's like, oh, you you offer terrible trades, and it's annoying. Usually, I counter those with absurdly. Is it, but awful. is it annoying? How annoying is it to get a notification? They're like, hey, you got a trade alert. I, you know what goes you know in what? my body? Dopamine. I have never. I can say that I have never been unhappy to get a trade offer. Yeah, ever. Even when it's Not bad, for ten years. Then I look at it and I go, "Oh my gosh, what?" I an want idiot. that. I'm with you. I want the dopamine hit on my phone that says somebody somebody's thinking about me right now. I will say that there is if if I see a trade offer and then I see a certain name, I, you know, I get excited. But before I even look at the trade, I go, "Ah, it's from him." Yeah, it's gonna be. You know, I open but, it and I already know. And then yeah, I, but we have look, we have some some uh, what uh, tradeyx. In uh, in mm -hmm. some leagues with mm -hmm. us, and yeah, ninety plus percent of the time, I know that this is going to be a bad offer, but that person has sent me. I've traded with that person multiple times because every once in a while something slips through, and you go, "Oh, that's a great offer for me. I'm going to take that immediately." <laughs> okay, it, it, he's Al Borland just sent me a pretty bad offer. <laughs> <laughs> pretty pretty bad. You know what? Thanks for the dopamine hit. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Uh, by the way, I, I cannot remember for the life of me who plays quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh, Laser Mayfield. All right, that is it for today's show. Drop it like it's hot. Don't forget to check your waiver wire for who players let go of to go pick up the big names this week because maybe some diamonds fell through into the open waivers. Tomorrow, starts of the week in matchups. Friday, we got more matchups, and Jason gets to spin the wheel of shame. Excellent. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.